unique history. Let's go back in time in our imaginations. The sponge, sponge boat captain, returning from the summer sponge diving season. They moor their boats. This is like 1880s, okay? They moor their boats in the fjord protected harbor of Yalos. They got so much money. Yes. They, they import Italian marble to make stairways to the mansions they build around the harbor and the harbor surrounding hills. Rare French period furniture, ship it over. And the workaholic spongers uh, had the bottom floors of their mansion as sponge processing warehouses where sponge women pound, clean, and, you know, rinse real good the sponges. While upstairs, the executives, sponge executives, um, organized the shipping and packing to the exclusive salons of Milan, Paris, New York, Kabul, Jakarta. Sponges have it going on. They enjoy the status as the sponge capital of the world. And those baskets of Venus, huh? Hmm. But on sponge itself, the um, use the basket of Venus for normal, daily, common tasks. They breed themselves like this. On Sponge Island, a baby's first toy is a sponge. Conveniently unbreakable. And the baby's bed is actually made out of sponges. Real cozy. Well, uh, that's great when you're a kid, but it leads to bizarre adult behavior because, uh, for example, if a tourist spills an ouzo onto the taverna floor, at least three provincial spongers will dive to the floor with their baskets of Venus and, and, and like, soak it up. Yeah, any unattended sloppy pool of liquid that really gets on their nerves is immediately sponged by the native born. No mosquitoes on sponge either, none. Any unattended pool is absorbed by the locals. This exemplary behavior is passed on generation to generation to teach the children the worth of the sea animal. They compulsively rip off the seabed, flog it to death, and flog it to the whole world. Spongers, obsessed, sponging all liquids that demonstrate the audacity to exist. Unsponged in their hyper-absorbent Aegean Island. Who cares? You know, let them be clean freaks all they want. 
They aren't hurting anybody. I mean, my cat licks herself all day long. That's her main trip in life. Sponging, licking. That's how they're wired. Unfortunately, after 2,000 years of obsessively absorbing water in this intrusive manner, what used to be the fresh water aquifer under the island Now, sponge is known as that dry island. No hotels on sponge. No water for tourists. Zero conventional tourists stay overnight on sponge. Their only visiting ships are water tankers from roads. with some fresh drinking water for thirsty spongers. This macabre island is idyllic for isolated, forbidden love. This is where Cleopatra and I come in. What well, you know what? Besides those water tankers, there is one anorexic, wired, nervous travel agent in Rhodes who doggedly promotes a round trip to Sponge Island every Wednesday morning. When his charter boat nears the harbor, the whole peasantry of Yalos which is like 3,000 people. They come down to the docks to watch this spectacle of this rare ship actually docking. And with a straight face, the spongers serve the unsuspecting tourists the fresh catch of the day at exorbitant otherworldly prices. Well, in fact, the spongers buy the fish in roads. <laughs> uh, and ferry it back on the Carpugia boat, but without ice. These are peasants who make 25 bucks a month, hard scrabble life. Ice too expensive, okay? Hmm. Rather, they take this fish from Rose and they take it behind the taverna, you know, and uh, Cafaneon and they uh, furtively slap it up, slap up, flop up, freshen, wake it up, that dead fish, kind of, you know. But slap up technique in a barrel of salt water. Wow. Well, the sponge natives, they encourage these rare off-island visitors to drink beer, wine, but mainly hard liquor, anything but water. The day's foreigners, brains dumbed down on hard alcohol, wander around the horseshoe, quayside harbor, and after just two hours, get back on the ship. And big lights of roads awaiting that night. The grateful spongers 
gratefully wave off the numb Taurus. Sigh. And try to get their group back. But, you know what? Suppose... Um, some stubborn kind of mutinous traveler or adventurer does not get back on the boat. He skips the ship. Nobody notices or cares. Could be just a, a lonely German that likes to smash up furniture and get drunk. Um, if some stubborn traveler stays over, he could find a, a dinghy, overturned dinghy on the quayside to you know, crash for a night. Uh, in such a case of uh, a foreigner uh, wandering around, the spongers become obsessively curious by this foreign creature. Mm. This pathetic bambino. Probably parents dead. No family. Gone now. Mm. Yeah, the spongers uh, 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 pretend to totally ignore, yet secretly track the person, the freak overnighter, from a safe distance. More fun than chasing away runaway goats. But after a few days, the traveler seems like sponge is a macabre mirage because whenever he approaches a native to rent a room, a place to sleep, the sponges fade away into the twisting narrow alleyways that they purposely constructed like this to mind fuck pirates when they come ashore. But if, you know, the foreign straggler survives for more than a week by living in limestone caves, he is accorded a grudging respect and only then will the boldest among spongers Kostas himself the messiah of Yahweh, approach the stranger <laughs> 